In this episode, we will add authentication in our application and we'll be making use of Clark Auth. Clark makes it very easy for us to add authentication. So all you need to do is to go to clark.com and then you'll create an account. Once you create an account, you'll have this button here saying dashboard. So I'll just click on dashboard. So once I click on dashboard, you'll see this is the uh, test application that I have been uh, using before. So what you'll need to do is to create a new application. And then from here, you'll give your application a name. And in this case, let's call it the survey. And here you'll select the different providers. And the popular one is email address and Google login. But you can select all these uh, even more, including GitHub, LinkedIn, Microsoft Discord, and so much more. So Clark makes it easy for us to use all these options and I'll just go with the defaults which is email address and Google and I'll just click on create application. Once you create the application you'll see right here uh, you have the different options for the different frameworks that you can use. So if you click on remix you'll see uh, the guide changes and in this case we are working on Next.js. So the first thing that we need to do is to uh, take these API keys and add them to our .env file. So I'll copy these um, API keys. Then I'll open my VS code. And right here you can see they say uh, .env.local, but we'll make use of uh, the .env file because uh, that is also the default for our Prisma. So right here at the root, create a new file and you can call it .env. E and V and right here you can paste those uh, particular keys just like that and save. Now another thing if your application will be public on github you can ignore the dot env right here. So you can ignore dot env so that it's not added to github whenever you push your code to github. Now let's go back to our browser here and we can continue in docs. So actually the docs will guide us uh, through each step that we need to do. And as you can see right here, the first step is to install um, Clark. So copy this command and open your terminal. So to open a terminal, you can use control J and I'll paste that command right here and hit enter. Uh, I'll go back right here. And then the second step is to set up the API keys, which we already did. So we will skip this step and go to the third one here, wrap your app in crack provider, and that is at our layout. So we will import a crack provider from at crack next.js. Then we will wrap our entire app with it. So I'll copy this, go to our app, then layout. And right here, we need to wrap everything with our provider component from crack. So right here, I'll bring in the crack provider from crack and we can use this to wrap this particular app. Just like that. At HTML, you can add uh, a prop called a suppress hydration warning so crack uh, sometimes have a lot of hydration warnings and we can suppress those warnings by using that prop okay so let's go back right here and we scroll now uh, require authentication to access your app so we need to create uh, a middleware file which we will include uh, this particular content so let's create this middleware.ts at the root of our application and then I can just copy the content of these and we will include it right there. So at the root again, right here, you can add a new file and we'll say middleware.ts, hit enter and right here, paste everything like that. And right here, we will be adding some options, for example, specifying the public routes uh, later on. But for now, this is all that we need to do. So I'll go back right here and you'll see here, 
embed the user button. Okay, for now we can skip this. Uh, this actually shows uh, the logged in user and provides some other options. And uh, what I'm looking for is the sign in and sign up, how to set them up. So custom sign up and sign in page, we need to go in here and we build our custom uh, sign up and sign in page. So we need to do it at stroke sign up and then we have uh, these syntax right there and page.tsx. We need to have a route that looks like this. Okay, so we'll go back to VS Code here. I can minimize everything here. And inside the app, uh, we will use a folder that groups our route right here. So use these brackets, round brackets, and we say clack. And once we use these round brackets, this crack folder will not be part of our route. We are just using it to group our auth routes, okay? So in here, we'll add a new folder and we'll call it sign up. And then inside this sign up folder, we will add yet another folder. And this is where we use square brackets and another square brackets. And then in here, we'll have dot, 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 three dots and we'll say sign up again, just like that. We hit enter. Then inside this one, we will add page dot tsx file. And right here is where we will include this content just like that. So I'll copy that, then I'll paste it here, okay? We will do a similar thing for sign in. So inside Clark, add a new folder and call it sign hyphen in then we create another folder use square brackets and in these square brackets we'll have yet another square brackets then let's have dot 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 and we'll say sign hyphen in in here we create a file we say page.tsx and we come back to the browser here so I'll copy that and I'll come back right here and I'll paste what we have there. And I'll go ahead and save. So by this, we have created the sign in page and the sign up page. And as you can see, we are using these component that come from crack um, Next.js and they'll build up our form, the entire form. So this is why crack is so easy to use. And then another thing, we need to update our environment variables. So when we are not logged in, we specify the sign in URL, the sign up URL, and also we specify the uh, routes that we go to whenever we are logged in or whenever we sign up. So I'll copy this and I'll come back right here and go to .env file and we paste everything right there. Now, another thing that you need to note is that uh, this route depends on how we named our uh, routes right here, okay? Uh, remember, you can customize them. You can call this one login, this one register. Then if you use that, you'll need to also specify right here uh, those particular routes. Okay, very nice. So now at this point, we can actually test our application. So if I come back right here and we try to go to localhost 3000 where our application is running you'll notice that it is taking us to the sign-in page it is redirecting us to the sign-in page and uh, that is because we added clack auth okay which is really awesome so we now have this where we can actually sign in for us to visit the home page so let's go ahead and I'll log in with a google account and once I log in, you can see that is when we are actually being able to see this particular content, okay? Whatever is at our homepage. But we want the homepage to be a public URL. We want like anyone to be able to visit our application just like this, uh, even if they are not logged in, okay? So let me sign out right here. So this is the application that we are working on. So we want everyone to be able to navigate even if we are not logged in. I don't know why it didn't sign out. And also to be able to see hotel details even if they are not logged in. And we require them to be logged in only when they are booking or uh, when creating a hotel, we require them to log in and so on. So to do this, I told you we can make use of the middleware. So if I come back to the code, 
we can go to the middleware ts right here and we can add some public routes so here we'll say uh, public routes and i'll use a full colon and i include these square brackets the first public route we want the home page to be a public route and the other one is the hotel details so therefore we will want this route hotel hyphen details um stroke full colon id to be also a public route uh, remember this will be the route for a hotel so if i come back right here and we go right here we click on one of the hotels you'll notice this is the route so stroke hotel and then right here we have the id of that particular hotel like that so that is why we say right here stroke id and then another thing right here we need to include this one so we will require this later on not right now when creating a hotel we will need to make a stroke api stroke upload thing uh, upload thing to be a public route so we will be making use of this to upload images and we can include it uh, right now uh, right here and i hope you remember if you don't uh, i'll make sure to remind you then so i'll go ahead and save that particular file okay and now even if we we are not logged in in our application uh, actually we can't sign out right now so we need to add uh, that particular button for sign out so let's do that first so what we will do is that i can minimize everything and at the components here i'll add a new folder and i will call this one layout inside the layout i'll add a new file and i'll call this one navbar and dot tsx this navbar will be a client component so use client and then we can create it stateless functional component so this will give us this template and we can say navbar so for that shortcut if you want to make use of it stateless functional component you can go to extensions and um, you can make use of simple react snippets so simple react snippets it should show up right here uh, this one so this is the extension that i am using for that shortcut so if you scroll right here you should be able to see the shortcuts right here if it's a class component cc uh, functional component this one stateless functional component this one so this is the one that i am actually using sfc and it creates that snippet okay so that is just uh, by the way right here you'll have a div and in here we can now actually add the user button that comes from crack and next js so if i come back to the documentation uh, we had skipped that particular step so if i click back one step here we should be able to see it uh, we need to add this particular button user button so we import it like this so i'll just import it like that right here we import the user button from crack next js then we make use of it just like this okay so i'll copy that then i'll come back right here and i'll actually paste it there and i save so user button after sign out url it goes to home page so now we need to hook this navbar to our app for us to see that effect so i go to app layout and right here i'll add our navbar so i'll say navbar and this will come from add components this is the add uh, import alliance that we configured when creating our application and we do it like that so i save now we should be able to see a user button uh, from crack so i come back to this app and let's refresh so we see it right here and we already have some hydration errors so these are crack hydration errors and uh, actually i haven't figured out how to uh, completely resolve them so just click uh, x there but you'll see that right here we have this user button and when i click on it you can actually manage your account right here and so much more another thing we can be able to sign out so if i click sign out 
that will log us out okay and once we are logged out you will see that now we are able to actually access this particular route which is the home page because we added it at our middleware to be a public uh, url or a public route now another thing that we can do right here if we go to sign in uh, just like that you'll notice that this sign in is at the very end right here okay it's not at the center uh, as we would like it to be so how we can resolve that is that uh, this clock right here we can add a default uh, layout for it specifically so we'll add a new file inside clock and we will say layout dot tsx right here status functional component hit enter and we can say this is the clock layout just like that then right here we'll add uh, maybe a div and right here we'll say a uh, class name and we'll say h to be screen so this is the height to be at the entire screen we'll flex the items and items will be at the center and another thing is that justify will be center just like that and now right here what we will pass is the children so here we'll say children uh, oops it should not be imported from anywhere this should be children we should accept that as prop so here i'll say children like that and we can add a type for this so right here we'll say full colon and we'll say children will be of type um, react dot uh, react node just like that now what this will do is that these children will actually wrap our routes right here okay so it will wrap the sign up page and it will wrap the sign in page and then these styles will be applied for them to be actually at the center so if i come back right here look it's actually now at the very center and if you go to stroke sign up you will see that it's also at the center look very nice